Welcome to Engage Beyond. This is a great opportunity to reflect on our mission and to reunite as a community, a community that I've come to know well as developers, partners, and fundamentally as people. Eight years ago, I joined this community as FileMaker's Vice President of Sales. Some of you may not know that I spent my first three weeks entirely out in the field, meeting with developers, partners, and customers to hear that voice of customer. I know I became a better sales leader as a result of that. And so two years ago, when I was promoted into the CEO role, I did the same thing. I packed my bags with Andrew LaCates. We went out on the road and we heard from customers huge confidence in the strength of our platform power, in the strength of our community, and in our relationship with our parent company, Apple. We also did some reflecting on our own with employees back at the wedge and made a determination that we wanted to be the leaders of our space. And in order to do so, we laid out an ambitious agenda to transform, to transform our platform from on-prem to cloud smart, our brand from FileMaker to Claris, and our culture from waterfall to agile. We've accomplished a ton in the past two years. I'm really, really proud of the milestones we've achieved. I'm happy to share some of those with you today, as well as to lay out our plans for the future. In those travels with the community, key attributes really stand out. This is a smart community, full of passion for your craft and for the platform. And, and there's a pervasive creativity that runs throughout the community. It was well reflected in an article where John Sindelar was quoted explaining his prior profession as a professional artist and saying that becoming a software engineer scratched the same creative itch as his previous career as a painter, but it did so with a wider audience and more profitably. This community is special and it feels glib to say that, but I hear it repeated so often it's as if, as if we all pinch ourselves for the opportunity to be a part of this community. So in learning that, I provide my assurance that I will do everything possible to protect and nurture the vibrancy of our special community. The community walks the walk. We saw this incredibly well reflected in our response to COVID-19. The volunteer efforts by so many of you uh, to, to go out and make a difference, have an impact to provide a response to the, the crisis was incredibly well felt. We continue to see that in efforts by the London Ambulance Service, Travis County for tracking vaccines, and by the Luke Commission, an NGO out of Eswatini, Africa. They're doing an incredible job providing a higher vaccination rate for their citizens than just about any African nation. And in part, there's a contribution by the, the Claris platform to accomplish that. As CEO, one fact is that I have to stay close to the customer. I'm inspired by Yvonne Chouinard's book, Let My People Go Surfing. He's the founder of Patagonia. And I quote his thoughts on customers. When I say customers, I don't mean the casual hikers, skiers, or fishermen who want to look okay in the wild. I'm talking about guides. Yvonne affectionately calls them dirt baggers, and they're his most important clients. So for those of you who make a living on our platform, those of you who identify as Claris professional developers, you are our most important customers. Research and quality assurance, when partnered with you, is a competitive differentiator, a differentiator for us. That's why your sense of security, confidence, and comfort is high priority for Claris. We know we have to stay true to customer in this competitive environment. In addition to knowing customer, I also have to know our product. And with a big platform like ours, there's always a risk of straying. To do so, 
I meet every week with four customers. I run our strategy week or weekly strategy meetings to make sure our engineering efforts and investments are aligned with the long term vision. I participate in our daily product meetings and I've personally completed the Claris Academy and the equivalent in partner training to make sure I understand what it's like to onboard as a first time developer. I've encouraged my product team to do the same thing and it's been a great learning. I recognize in some ways how little I know compared to all of you as developers. I also recognize the significant investment each of you have made to perfect your craft and that that investment will be honored and respected. Finally, I hire great talented engineers. We, we nurture and develop the talent we have and I trust them to do a great job. Let me shift now to our investment priorities for the year. Priority number one is the platform. There are two key areas. One is improving the onboarding experience. And two is modernizing to improve performance and scale of the platform. A great product experience is essential. Second priority is community. If I haven't said this clearly in the past, let me say it now. Our platform out of the box without a talented developer does nothing. The magic happens when a skilled developer understands user requirements and deploys. So our success is mutual. It's interdependent and symbiotic. In order for us to enjoy collective success, we need to grow the community and we need to do, it, do so in a way that's reflective of our, of our values. In addition, we have a central role, not only to produce original Claris content, but also to leverage and curate the many contributions that come from our community. So awareness of that content is available to all. And then the third priority is just that, awareness. We have two dimensions here. One, all of you as developers have great careers. They're enviable. I spoke recently with Jake Johnson from Angel City Data. He explained to me how he had moved from being a professional musician to working for the Apple Store to mastering FileMaker, and he is now the creative director at Angel City Data. He has a home, a wife, children, he's thriving. I spoke also with Emanuela Spagnoli, a, an Italian who went through Apple Academy in Naples. In her second year curriculum, she picked up FileMaker, has since become a full-time developer working for a Claris partner. She is prosperous, independent, and empowered. Of course, we also need to drive awareness for organizations that want to make digital transformation happen, but simply aren't aware of low code or the Claris version of it. More to come on each of these priorities. Shifting now into our purpose. We've talked about purpose as power to the problem solvers, and that's probably insufficient. Uh, in essence, our purpose resolves around empowering you to be successful at what you do best, to solve critical workplace problems efficiently. We give you a platform let, let, that lets you do the hard things your users need affordably and relatively quickly. With an understanding of that purpose, it shapes our long term, or, or it shapes our strategies. You can look at this model of awareness, land, expand as a typical customer experience model for any company. But what's unique in our approach as Claris is that we are now investing in success by making sure everybody who is new to our platform understands the role of our partner community. I say this again, we are now making it a priority to drive awareness of our partner community to everybody who comes to Claris. We know many of them may choose to do it themselves and that's fine but we think the opportunity to understand partners around the world who can help them train, who could develop, consult, and mentor will always give them the promise that they're not alone. 
So we're making a fundal shift, fundamental shift in how we do that with the expectation that that will increase success. As well, once people understand the infrastructure, data, licensing, and they know they can trust a, a trained uh, developer, we think we can encourage them to expand more, to take that first app and go to multiple apps. So let me speak to our routes to market. We're fundamentally focused in two areas. One is Claris promoting Claris to small and medium-sized businesses around the world. The second route to market is in collaboration with the Apple School Manager targeting K through 12 schools. For these organizations, we're now providing a free version of Claris Connect that integrates student information systems with the Apple School Manager so that m m uh, devices can be managed at scale with zero touch. This solves a really important hard problem and it's our intention to provide an outstanding customer experience. So by getting that taste of Claris Connect, we can then inform them about the custom app development capabilities available with the FileMaker platform and drive them through that same customer success model that I've just described. One more change we're gonna make is in our approach to, to IT departments. In the past, we've not been friendly with IT and they've not necessarily been friendly with us. We need that to change. Fortunately, we've seen CIO attitudes shift over the last two years, recognizing the significant software backlogs that they're dealing with. They know they need to try something different. And we think there is a very real opportunity with low code validation for a, a platform like ours to appear on the IT standards list. We've invested for years to secure our platform. We have great confidence in the security we provide. Changes we're making now are to increase investments for third party attests and certification to give assurance to IT departments that this platform is ready. And then finally, with ni the 19 release, we opened the platform to tens of thousands of JavaScript libraries to, expand, to enhance user experience and provide those add-on capabilities. We feel like we have a great model now for the end-to-end -end customer experience that will do its best to ensure long-term customer loyalty. Let me zoom out to a much wider perspective. If this looks familiar, it's The Innovator's Dilemma by Clayton Christensen. For those of you not familiar with it, if you look at the y-axis, this is recognition that every technology goes through a phase of disruption, if it's successful. FileMaker went through that phase of disruption where value, growth, and innovation all happened exponentially. That's what every technology company is looking for. FileMaker was very much developed appropriately for the era of problems it was solving. But we know we need to make investments to make sure we don't flatten out. So you've seen what we we're doing with Claris Connect. Understand the focus we're put adding with custom apps and now integration to help define our category. And we have a long-term vision for intelligent automation which continues to require investment. We have committed to a cloud smart architecture, which is our attempt to best manage significant on-premise requirements, which we know exist, as well as, as cloud expectations from the market. With improved architecture, we know we can provide better performance, scale, and drive faster innovation for all of you. So to build on that foundation, and to present from the lens of how we will navigate this dilemma, I'd like to turn over to our Vice President of Engineering. Peter has been with us, not quite continuously, but for nine years in total as of this week. Peter ran the Bento development team when he was with FileMaker before, left as Vice President of Engineering for a startup and a high growth company. And fortunately, he rejoined us uh, more than a year ago to incredible success. 
To again, help present that lens of how we'll navigate this dilemma, I turn it over to Peter Nelson. Welcome, Peter. Thanks so much, Brad. There's a lot to be excited about here. Let's see if I can add some to it. Um, Brad talked about investments and rebuilding, about modernizing our platform. I wanna get concrete today about what this rebuilding is looking like within Claris, about what we're building and why we're making the choices we're making. And I wanna talk about how it's gonna impact your work, both in the near term and the long run. Because at the end of the day, it's all about making sure you've got the right set of tools to build your own businesses and careers for the next decade. Low code has exploded and for good reason. Much of the FileMaker platform is well positioned to take advantage of that growth and of the acceptance that the market is showing that low code developed solutions are viable. Parts of our platform, however, are not well architected for this new scale and parts of it are not well architected for the distributed WAN environment we find ourselves in today. We are investing heavily to close those gaps. Lots of demos, especially high level keynote presentations like this one, focus on pretty visuals and eye candy. We will have a little bit of that today because who doesn't love eye candy? But I wanna spend the bulk of this talk sharing how we're thinking about something far less outwardly sexy, but far more powerful and influential to your work. And that's data. A lot has been said about workflow engines, new ways of creating solutions. That's created some concern and confusion amongst this group. Making sure it's easy to stitch together solutions that leverage lots of different external services is still very, very important to us. And you heard Brad talk about the early success we are seeing with Connect. But we're hoping that by showing you some of the amazing work and thinking we're doing on data storage and interoperability, and about how anything new that we build will work alongside our existing properties will make you very comfortable that we're listening to you, that we're innovating towards a bright future together, and that we're committed to taking your existing solutions forward with us and making the platform you already love much, much more valuable to you. Our existing platform has stood the test of time and served you well for more than three decades. It's evolved from a single user tool to one that worked well in small LAN environments. It was built from scratch to serve those needs. While that made it revolutionary, it's also meant that keeping it current with existing emerging trends and requirements is increasingly difficult and costly. We're building something new, a new stack built on new technologies <clears throat> We're doing this because we expect this new effort is going to allow you to be able to create, create applications designed for the web in the intuitive manner you've come to expect from modern tools. We want you to be able to do so in a faster, more secure environment than you've ever been able to do before. What is this new thing? Unlike our existing properties, it was conceived in a world filled with wide area networks. It's multi-tenant and it's containerized, which means it's cheap to deploy new instances. That means we and you can support cheap trial deployments. It's open, it's modern, it's fast. It supports eventual consistency and a lack of transaction boundaries and locking, meaning we can handle orders of magnitude more throughput than our current engines can handle. And like our existing FileMaker property, it runs in the cloud, but it can also be deployed on-prem for those instances where that's required. And that all sounds great. If we were building it all as a silo though, it wouldn't be all that useful to most of you today and we would have failed. Failing is not the plan. You are all familiar with ESS. A huge percentage of your solutions deployed in the wild today, use it to push or pull data from places other than your solution's primary database. In some cases, even using it as the primary storage pipe for your solution. It's a pretty cool, pretty robust piece of technology. But what happens if you own both sides of that pipe instead of just one? Internally, we call it ESS Plus. I'm sure it'll have a much better name by the time it launches. But with it, we can extend our traditional ESS functionality to fully replicate in this new backend every single thing that worked under Draco. And we can do it so well that you can completely move your data into this new, fast, scalable, containerized, 
born in the cloud backend with the push of a button. And that means you get to keep running your existing FileMaker solutions against that new data trove without interruption. You don't have to move your data. Draco and the FileMaker database engine aren't going away. You can keep running your solutions exactly as you do today, or you can push this button, move your data into our new infrastructure, and your solution keeps working exactly as it does today. So now, regardless of whether what we first roll out in this new stack is enough for you to fully build a new solution, you can see that it's a value add to your existing work. Anything new you build gets to reference and work with your existing data in real time. You can create beautiful new web optimized layouts and functionality and take advantage of what we're developing in the way it was meant to be used. And in those areas where you're better served by the existing FileMaker platform, use that instead. That's what we mean when we start talking about a one Claris platform. All of our tools, FileMaker, Connect, and soon this new thing, working together against shared data sets. And for Claris, it lets us focus a lot of effort on one software stack going forward increasing our engineering velocity massively. We take our customers with us because all of their existing solutions work and they can extend them through the UX of this new platform. You've also heard Brad talk about our Agile transformation. Today, you're seeing the fruits of that work in our recent FileMaker 19 releases. You're getting them every two to three months now and they're including new features and improved functionality. Properties like our server product and WebDirect over the last year have increased the number of concurrent users they can support fivefold, all while dropping the amount of CPU and RAM required and dramatically reducing the number of bugs in the products. You'll see the same sort of cadence from this new stuff development. Early versions may not have every feature you need in order to serve your problem set, though again, Remember that you'll get to use it in conjunction with your existing solution, not just as a replacement for it. But it's going to get more and more powerful rapidly. And to give you all a little peek at what we're working so hard on, I give you Robert Holsey. Thanks, Pete. And hello, everyone. I really wish we were doing this in person because gathering together with all of you is one of the highlights of my year. Uh, but I also love any opportunity to share with you what the team's been hard at work on, and I've got some really exciting stuff to share today. Now, for those of you that don't know me or perhaps don't recognize me with the beard, I've been with Claris now for over 15 years. I started off in support before moving over to the product team, and that journey has afforded me the opportunity to speak and meet with so many of you and see firsthand how the Claris platform combined with your amazing creativity allow you to solve any challenge put in front of you. I've also gotten to test and experience literally thousands of apps that you all have created. I've built many of my own, both for in-production use inside of Claris, as well as just to see what I can uh, do with the platform. So much like many of you, I have built a career and a livelihood around this platform. And when we started this project, I raised a lot of the same questions and concerns I'm sure that a few of you are feeling right now. But as I work alongside our engineering and design teams, and I see the progress we make week to week, and I see the excitement build as we knock down each new challenge, I've built a deep confidence in what Pete has just laid out. I am confident that we're gonna be able to deliver on the promise that he just made. And what I wanna share with you today is just a few examples, some platform enhancements that will go directly after giving you the tools to create beautiful apps, fast with less to maintain. Now, before we jump into those examples, quick disclaimer, what you're about to see from a visual standpoint, is still pretty rough. It's because we're not focusing on polishing yet. We're really focused on making sure that we create a great user experience. And that's gonna come through working with our design team and collecting feedback from you in the community. So with that understand, let's take a look at our first example. And that's our grid system. This is something you can actually start playing with right now in our uh, quick start experience in FileMaker 19. We've been continuing to iterate on it, and you can see that as you start dragging out elements onto the page, we'll automatically resize, position, and ensure everything is perfectly aligned for you. Now, this does a few really important things for us. One is, again, it lets you build beautiful apps faster. 
You've always been able to create gorgeous apps on the FileMaker platform, but it required you, the developer, to put in that effort. With our grid system, we can assure that everything you create will look fantastic right out of the box, and then you can apply your creativity on top of that solid base. But this also means that we can provide you truly responsive layouts where you can define reflow rules, meaning that instead of creating a whole bunch of different layouts for different device sizes or orientations, you create one, and that single layout automatically adapts itself for your user's device. And because you're managing less layouts, we can start presenting them to you in new interesting ways, which brings me to my next area, and that's visual workflows. Think of these as like storyboards where you can just simply start dragging drop elements out. And as you connect the dots, we automatically create the necessary scripts and buttons for you. So now you're not thinking about scripts or writing, uh, building the table structure. You can just focus on your user's journey. And taking that a step farther, we know that there's gonna be common use cases, design patterns. Say for example, that you wanted to create a data submission form, right? So you need a submit and confirmation page. You can just drag this collection of uh, pages out and we'll automatically create the buttons for you. And as you add additional pages, because we understand the relationship between them, we can dynamically add the buttons like next, previous, and submit for you. Now, it's important to understand that this is not about taking any level of control away. It's about helping you get started faster. But probably more important is starting to shift the way that we think about building apps on the platform. Away from thinking first about the table and schema, and again, focusing more on your user's journey. And to help that even more, we've made another change. It's not immediately obvious, but it's really powerful. And that's removing the requirement for layouts to have a context to a specific table occurrence. Again, this helps you not think about the tables and structures when you first start, just really focus on your user, user's journey. But it also enables the last thing I wanna to talk to you about and that's nested layouts. Now, I'm sure that most of you are excited about this. This is one of the top most feature, uh, uh, top requested features on the community. Uh, but for those of you that may not be familiar with this, what nested layouts allows you to do is get at the problem where you have an object, let's say a top navigation or a series of fields that you plan on using throughout your app. Today, you would copy and paste those elements to each layout, whether it's five, 10, 100, and then to make any changes, you would need to go into each one of those layouts and manually make those tweaks. Now, not only is this time consuming, uh, but it also means that you're less inclined to go and actually make those changes unless you absolutely have to. And of course, that works against the agile nature that we need to be in to keep up with the demands of today's world. So let's take a look at how nested layouts changes that. Here you have that student page that you saw me working on earlier. And we know that we're gonna be reusing this throughout our app. So creating it as a standalone page makes sense. But at the moment, I'm working on a camp registration. So I've created a separate layout, and on here, I've got some basic camp information. For the purposes of this demo, I've also created a button along the top that when clicked, will automatically embed that student information directly in line within the layout. And to prove to you that that's really that same layout that we were just working on, if I go in and make any changes, let's say I add a student ID title at the top, or I create additional fields, move things around, delete objects, change the colors, whatever changes I make. When I hit save, any changes that are on this page will be automatically reflected on the original page as well. And in fact, all pages are all instances of this page throughout your entire app. So again, nested layouts, continuing that theme of allowing you to manage less and build faster. And you can see how all three of these come together so that you can create beautiful modern apps faster with less to maintain so that you can reclaim that time and apply your amazing creativity to the next level of challenge facing your customer. Now, I'm sure you've got lots of questions and that's great because we're gonna come back later this fall with a deep dive under the hood where we can start answering those questions. But for now, to go into a little bit more detail about our commitment to the community and to our uh, expanding our brand awareness, I'd like to turn things over to my colleagues in sales and marketing Start, starting with my good friend, Janine Campbell. Thank you all. Take it away, Janine. Thanks, Robert. Gosh, you're a tough, tough act to follow, I have to say. I know this audience would love to hear more from Robert, and you will, as he said. But as Brad mentioned in the very beginning of our uh, event today, our priorities include platform, community, and awareness. 
and I'm happy to take some time to share more in these focus areas. So as the first step from sales and marketing, I'm going to start us out talking about community priorities, but also expanding on that a little bit to include the importance of our communication with each other. And then we'll move on to awareness in a little bit. So as you heard Brad say at the very beginning, this community is special, no question. And it is something we care deeply about. Some of you may know that before I worked for Claris, I was a customer. So I've experienced firsthand the passion of this community from a variety of perspectives over the last several years. And I am really committed to growing this community and with it, growing our connections to each other. Community is vital to Claris. And as we see it with our platform and our strategy, we view community as a partnership. It's powerful because of the thousands of partners and developers who are active in it. And you all contribute to our growth in so many ways, whether it's the developer groups and meetups that you host regularly and have continued meeting virtually around the world over the last year, up through events like Pause on Air. And I'm excited to say I'll be attending my first pause in a few months, and I'm really looking forward to it. To so all of the content that you produce, there's so much of it, and we're so grateful for it. The generosity and expertise of this community is unmatched. Additionally, you also heard Brad mention the Loot Commission, and I actually had a chance to speak with Sam Riggleman recently from the Loot Commission, and he shared that the community was fundamental to his team's success. They were able to get help and answers quickly, and it had a huge impact on their building out of their solution. So in short, the community of developers and partners helps customers and each other get the most from Claris. And our ambition is to best facilitate that, to be a hub that brings valuable content and connections to our developers, partners, and customers. Creating a place for people to make those connections that's welcoming, supportive, and keeps you coming back. To curate resources that are helpful for learning and advancing your skills and solutions. And of course, as Robert mentioned, to listen and obtain valuable feedback to help make the platform better. You may have even noticed that we're really investing in community. Over the last few months, there have been several user interface updates to the community forum. The goal is to make it easier to help you find what you're looking for. And we're continuing in this direction. In just a few weeks, we'll be launching something called the Learning Adventure on the community site. The Learning Adventure is a curated roadmap of relevant content. It's particularly focused on new users as we get it started. But our goal is to really help those users focus on what matters most, depending on their understanding of the platform. We're really excited to get it out into the wild, gather your feedback on it, and see how far we can take it into the future. Another thing that we're really actively focusing on is growing our professional Claris developers. We're leveraging training partners to help us repurpose content with a specific focus on computer science students through our partnerships with Quasar Silicon Valley and Apple Developer Academies. These programs introduce the Claris platform to students who are seeking careers as professional software developers. And in parallel, we're doing the same, but with a slightly different focus to help create new business entrepreneurs through a business incubator initiative. And you'll hear about more about that in a few minutes. These programs are critical for our growth, but they also give us learnings about how to educate new developers on our platform that will help us improve our content plans that are currently in the Claris Academy today. Making the Claris Academy more effective for users with varying interests, skill levels, and goals is among our highest priority in our backlog. Why? Because we know we need more developers to address the demand gap. And we also know the importance of verifying developer skills with certification. We streamlined our certification a few months ago to align with our product cycles, and we'll continue to maintain certification as an essential credential for professional low-code developers. And as the Claris platform grows to new products and technologies, we'll continuously improve the certification we have. And we're also investigating new certification models into the future, like micro-certifications. Imagine a certification specific to Claris Connect, just as one example. And finally, we can't build the best products without a consistent feedback loop that works. We depend on your input to help make our products better with each release. We've already started making updates to the ideas area in community. These are mostly under the hood and functionality based, but we're continuing our improvements in this area. It's our primary feedback channel from our customers. In the coming months, we'll continue to enhance that area and create increased communication and cadence back to you from our Claris team members, creating more transparency on our plans related to the ideas that we receive from you. And another valuable feedback channel for us is our external testing service, or ETS. 
ETS lets us anticipate issues and collect feedback ahead of a release. The ETS as it stands today was built for a single product and it's no longer enough. It was before our shift to Agile. We need to engage with you earlier and more frequently in the development cycle. We're working to increase visibility into what is being built and we're exploring ways to make this happen. Whether we share demos or engage with community user groups on a regular basis is still being defined, but again, we'll define it together with you. And of course, feedback from our entire community is really important. Our Claris partners, though, have an additional, additional requirements and perspectives. And so let me turn it over to my friend and colleague, Julie Sigfrinius, to share some perspective on our partner communications and growth. Julie, over to you. Thank you so much, Janine. You know, as Janine has been talking about community and the importance of our communication, in the same way, my job is about Claris Partners and the importance of communication. Some of you may know that before I joined Claris in 2007, I was a Claris Partner for over a decade. And the viewpoint of being a partner is something I try to introduce within Claris all the time. It's part of my DNA. So let's talk about Claris Partners. I would argue that our Claris Partner Program is one of the, or if not the longest running tech partnership in existence. And that creates a huge responsibility that I have to maintain and grow the partner community all while technology, ours and others, is evolving and adapting. So I wanna share with you what we've been working on. Over the last year, we wanted to focus on listening to our partners more. And so last summer, we began a monthly forum of listening sessions. We call them Share Voice. And these sessions are delivered by our partners. They, they include insights, ideas, sometimes challenges, but 100% of the agenda is driven by our partners to share to a stakeholder group of Claris every single month. These sessions are making a difference and the feedback is materially impacting certainly our product team, but also sales, marketing, support, and beyond. It's working. Earlier this month, we added a tool to our partner community to allow partners to raise topics for future meetings. And in that tool, partners can then prioritize what's important to talk about these meetings. I encourage all partners to participate in Share Voice. But we're not done. In fact, we're just getting started. We are committed to increasing the transparency that we provide for our partners. And we will be introducing very soon a tool in partner community that provides visibility to our partners of our top known issues and their status and a way to collaborate together to define what the issues really are to solve them better and faster. And what Janine talked about regarding ETS is so important to our partner, partner community. Over the years, I've talked to partners and they've told me time and time again that ETS is really powerful and important for them. I would argue that our Claris partners are some of the best battle testers that we have. So we've got to get this ETS refix done and we will. But it's more than just about communication. As Brad has just said, partners are part of our strategy. And as proof, I want to talk about two programs that increase our customer success by connecting them with our partners. So the first is a pilot program that programmatically is introducing partners to prospects and customers who are not already engaged with a partner. This is at the option of the customer, of course, but making these introductions provides the customer with an expert, a coach, if you will, to provide guidance, to provide advice, and to give services. And while this pro pilot program is new, we have already delivered hundreds of referrals to the partners who are helping us build this program. And we have seen two amazing things happen in just a few short months. Number one, our customers are more successful. The data is showing that customers who engage with partners are more likely to adopt the platform and get to success faster. Number two, the partners are also winning. 
these referrals are turning into meaningful engagements, not just proofs of concepts. And the collaboration between customers and partners is solving major business problems that matter. So it seems obvious, but improving our customer experience by introducing them to partners is working, and this is exciting. Secondly, earlier Brad mentioned how Claris Connect is solving an important problem for K-12 schools and for Apple School Manager. And this opens the door for customers' interest in FileMaker. So wouldn't it be interesting if we created a collection of apps built in FileMaker to make a great first impression while we're doing that? We have the initial collection already assembled and we're calling it the Claris Smart Pack and it's launching this quarter. And I want to share with you that every single app that's in this collection has been built by a Claris partner. We can't do it without you. I'm sure our partners want to learn more about our strategies. On September 28th, we are offering an exclusive partner-only session that will take a deep dive on these strategies so that we can align and collaborate on these opportunities before us. These are just two examples of programs that we're committed to right now. But with the market opportunity for growth, we also need to grow our partner community. We think about that a lot. And as importantly, we have a strong responsibility to remain consistent with our shared cultural values. We think about who we can bring into the partner program and we think about how. And for more on this topic, I'd like to introduce my friend and colleague, Brandon Love. Thanks so much, Julie. Hi, everyone. I've, I've been with Claris almost five years after nearly five years with Apple. I'm so proud to be a part of this organization and this team, but it, it truly is our platform and our mission that gets me out of bed in the morning. We've got 1,400 partner organizations around the world. The diverse nature of our community really is core to who we are and what we're about. As Brad mentioned in his opening, our number two priority is to enrich our diverse community, but we want to make sure we're doing it the right way. We want to make sure that we're growing it with equity and with diversity to allow more people from all backgrounds to participate in this growing economy. We work diligently to recognize and foster diversity in our community, but the truth is we just need more of it. This week, you'll see we've released a new story about three amazing women in our ecosystem that speak to exactly what I'm talking about. Meet Jacqueline, Elisa, and Elsa. All three of these women are part of our community and have been Claris partners for several years. And the coolest part, all of these women are from Columbia and live and work there. All three of these women see professional low code as the boost that they need for their livelihood and careers, and I couldn't agree more. These three women and the women at, uh, at WIT-FM are both great examples of the existing diversity we've got in our community, and I encourage you to check out our recently published blog posts featuring our women developers. You've probably seen, we've doubled down in our approach to make sure that these stories are heard, and we'll continue that focus. As we said before, fostering diversity in our community is core to our strategy, but we're not just talking about it. We're building a program to make a difference. Today, black entrepreneurs are not equally represented in technology. Only 7% of tech employees are black. Of all the businesses that shut down during the pandemic, over 40% of them were black owned, which is nearly twice the rate compared to other racial groups. Finally, there was a recent study that came out that indicates 42% of black workers are currently holding jobs that may be automated by 2030. You know, personally, I found that these stats were not only staggering, but also completely unacceptable. And we're committed to doing our part to help change these statistics. The same way so many of you have built careers and businesses on the Claris platform, we think that we can help more black entrepreneurs to do the same. So what are we gonna do about it? This fall, we're launching a program that we're calling the Low Code Accelerator. We'll be offering training, not only in our professional low code platform that we all know and love, but on how to run a business, how to engage in a mentor network, and how to get funding to ultimately build a profitable business and career. We've partnered with a unique organization and startup studio called EonXI, who has experience in producing programs like this, and we're so lucky to have them. We're also collaborating with Kathy House, who's a, an entrepreneurship professor from Howard University, uh, Chris Ippolite over at iSolutions, and collectively, they'll provide our business training, our technical training, and mentorship to get these new businesses off the ground. We couldn't be more excited to launch this program, and we believe we've got a real chance to make a difference. 
Thanks so much for your time. Let me pass it over to Andrew Lacates to re-anchor us on our third priority about increasing awareness. Andrew. Thank you, Brandon, and hello, everyone. It's great to be back again this year. Okay, so we've talked about product. We've talk, talked about community. Uh, I'm here to talk about awareness as promised uh, by Brad and the team. You know, like many of you, uh, I've been using this platform through its entire evolution, and there's really nothing quite like it. Uh, and yet sometimes we hear from some of you that, you know, Claris is the best kept secret at Apple. And for the record, I hate that. Like, I'm in marketing now. We hate that. Our marketing mission then is to make more people aware of the Claris platform and do it with all the enthusiasm that we know you have uh, for it. A few years ago, we did conceive of uh, workplace innovation as our category. And I want to address that because some of you have been asking me, is that still a thing? And my answer is yes and no. Did we achieve critical mass in the marketplace for the words? No, but we still believe in creative problem solvers who innovate locally, right where problems need fixed, fixed by the folks who know their unique problems the best. And if I think about what Peter was talking about earlier related to FileMaker in Draco, it's like FileMaker was tailor-made for exactly that, for workplace innovation. But we are thinking more broadly about who we are and where we're going in our categorization, which is to say our true differentiation is well, different. Uh, we believe we provide a professional low code platform and that our community of developers and partners are professionals solving the hard problems that matter for business. Analysts in, in the press largely segment low code into two spaces. Uh, one is low code for citizen developers. It would be on the left side of this graph. And there are many products entering the market trying to address this audience. Uh, they're cheap, they're generally beautifully designed, but largely they're data productivity focused and rather limited in capability related to Claris and what we can create with it. The other segment is typically low code for professional coders. And these platforms are about making professional developers more efficient in enterprise uh, AD&D teams. They focus primarily on code generation and infinite scale and compliance. But compared to Claris, they don't really feel very low code at all when you use them, right? So with three and a half decades uh, of building up our technology and the best practices in this community, we know we've got the power to solve the hard problems with the efficiency and the affordability of low code. So we're committed to professional low code. And the reason I think it's a good idea is that if you're a customer, it means you're getting higher value stuff with this platform. You can solve higher value problems. You can build and deliver higher value apps. And if you're a partner or a developer by career, it just means you're in a more lucrative space. Brad also said at the outset that we are committed to uh, a journey towards IT compliance, IT friendliness, I think he termed it. You know, IT is suffering more than anyone from the demand gap for software. And our goal is to be the platform of choice for solving business problems. We can be exactly what IT needs, but it's gonna take some time to get there, some stages to get there. And you know, the first step this year for us was opening the platform. In FileMaker 19, we opened the platform. As a result, IT app development teams can get low code efficiency from Claris, but with the confidence that they're not gonna hit a feature wall, right? Another step we're taking right now is to invest in critical security certifications. In the last two weeks, we received a SOC 2 type two report for Claris Connect. And just a few days before we we got that. We also achieved ISO 27001 and 27018 uh, certifications for security and confidentiality. These are big investments, uh, but they're important ones, and we're really excited about them. Uh, as internationally recognized credentials, uh, they just mean that customers are going to more immediately trust our platform. This will help our developers who are proposing new projects. This will help our partners who are selling new engagements. So we'll continue to invest to advance the Claris platform in compliance and trust with IT. It's critical for us. So we will be the platform of choice for solving business problems. And we hope, we think we, you should be able to say confidently that Claris is the professional low-code platform that lets you meet any software requirement by affordably solving the hard problems that matter with less effort. Then one more thing. We also took a big step about two years ago uh, in renaming our company as Claris. We know you need brand support. And of course, since then, we've been emphasizing the Claris name for our platform, and we will continue to do so. We are proud uh, to be Claris, and we will work, to, we will work hard to strengthen our brand identity and recognition. Secondarily, we know it's also powerful to communicate that we are part of Apple. So we're going to make a change to how we say that. Today on our website at the About Claris page, you see this. Claris International Inc. period is a subsidiary of Apple Inc. period. We're going to change it to this. 
Claris and Apple Company. We believe it will simply and clearly show our relationship to Apple. We're updating Claris.com to reflect this today. You'll see us using this going forward. Please feel free to do so as well. I really feel that Claris and the Claris community are entering a new chapter. And I hope you feel confident that you can continue to build great things with this platform and build great businesses with this platform proudly as Claris developers and partners. I want to thank you all for your time today. Uh, now for some final thoughts, let me turn it back to my friend, Brad. Thank you. When I started this morning, I tried to give you a sense for how interconnected I see us. This is a partnership. When we do our job to enable you and you do your job to serve customers, value is created. Our success is mutually dependent. I also spent spent spend some time talking about our purpose, empowering you to be successful at what you do best, solving critical workplace problems efficiently. I was recently introduced to Spec Bowers, one of the founders of FileMaker, previously called Nutshell. He and four others started the company based on the founder's insight that mainframe databases were complicated, and with the whole personal computing evolution coming on board, far more people could access, access databases with a powerful user, user interface and flexibility. So while, while the words have evolved for decades, our purpose has remained the same. Words like purpose and values serve to inform, focus, and pr prioritize our efforts. Essential to leadership is delivering an outstanding product experience over time. So to be clear, that is our key investment. I have some asks of you, and each of them are designed to support your own organization. First, use 19.3. This is our latest offering. It is the most stable, most performant, and most secure offering we have. Critical to our feedback loop is understanding what's working, what has the opportunity to be improved? Help us to innovate, the, the, help us to bridge the innovator's dilemma. Communicate with us, connect with us more frequently as we're opening up transparency into how we're guiding and, and uh, investing our engineering efforts to deploy software quickly. Know your value. Fight for compensation that's worthy of the problems you solve in a very hot IT economy. When in doubt, if asked what you do, please share words like these. I am a professional developer who builds tailor-made solutions that drive better business outcomes. I am a low-code platform expert that allows the workplace to meet any requirement efficiently. And I am certified by Claris, an Apple company, the low-code pioneer. Commit to selling solutions. We've shared with you that now partners are central to our sales motion. Let's work through the teaming dynamics to make sure customers have an outstanding experience. And then finally, dive into Engage Beyond. We have a number of sessions coming up that I would love for you to calendar. Understand this is about our, our, our this format is about our intention to provide more continuous information. Some of the sessions I'm excited to talk about include a Q&A that will be hosted by Peter Nelson and myself on September 2nd to address things that may pop up through this keynote today. We'll be active on the community as a way to collect those themes, and we'll explain how you'll be able to, to direct your questions and make sure they get answers. Obviously, please sign up today for WIM. Take a look at the other sessions available on the website and recognize that we have under the hood panel discussions and a Claris brand workshop coming soon. So finally, commitments. You have my commitment to be honest, to listen, and to stay the course. My ask of you is big, and the goal is worthy. We have a talented and growing developer community, a committed Claris team, 
continued demand for and validation of professional low code and decades of continuity in our purpose. I believe we're gonna to lead together. We are building our reputation as a community for delivering a huge volume of powerful solutions across an economy that runs on software. That means we are going to deliver a big portion of all software that small and medium-sized businesses and schools around the world need to exceed their goals. So the commitments I ask of you, imagine that future. Recognize that if we don't seize this opportunity, a competitor will. So expect that opportunity to be yours. And while we're forging great bonds as teammates and friends along the way, let's make this vision our reality. I urge each of you to commit. I assure you, you have Claris's full commitment. Thank you so much for attending today. Back to you, Janine. Thanks, Brad. Um, and thanks to this entire team of friends and colleagues for your commitment today. And thank you to all of you for your commitment in attending and hanging with us. I have one final ask of all of you, and that is please engage in the discussion on community as we provided the links in the chat, and also share your feedback with us. That is so important, and we really want to hear from you. So at the conclusion of this meeting, please click that link to complete the survey. Um, and we look forward to getting your input on today's sessions as it will inform future sessions. And with that, I hope you will join us again in the future. We'll get started with WIM's Server for Linux session in just a few minutes. So thank you again so much to everyone, and we hope to see you again really soon.